Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. To start things off, crypto retirement savings firm Bitcoin IRA is ready to take on smaller accounts with the launch of its new IRA product known as Saver IRA. Around four years ago, Bitcoin IRA launched... <coughs> its first self-directed individual retirement account that required balance minimums of 20,000 US dollars. Now the firm has dropped that minimum to $3,000 for a standard account. With the addition of Saver IRA, the company has a no balance minimum account that instead requires a monthly deposit of 100 US dollars. They said when it's time to make the decision of when to buy, You'll find that folks who want to get their toes wet will freeze. This gives them a dollar cost average mechanism without having to think about it every month, end quote. As 19 continues to ravage the world economy, Klein says he believes more consumers will look for alternative retirement funds. He says, I think you're going to see a lot of tightening of belts, a lot of 401ks being offered by providers out there possibly or not matching. Although Klein has been speaking to his staff about the Saver IRA account since November 2018, this is the first time that the Bitcoin IRA has had enough resources in its compliance department and automation to handle thousands of smaller accounts. The firm also had to build an application program interface or API that would allow users to implement direct deposit. So for those of you who just simply don't know about me or what I'm about, um, I, for some reason, get very excited when it comes to retirement accounts. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess it's just who I am as a person. Uh, I mentioned many years ago that my favorite time in the cryptocurrency space would be when the implementation of Bitcoin retirement accounts began to become a, a, a very big thing. And it is now that time. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into it in this video. If you do not already have some type of a, a savings account and or a retirement account, uh, please, I implore you to begin at some point in the near now, uh, just so you have money when you get older. We are currently in a, if you haven't noticed, 19 has kind of destroyed a lot of things. A lot of these jobs are not going to come back. And a lot of people don't realize, for those of you who don't realize, that people um, right now living will never be able to retire. And that is N-E-V-E-R, for those of you who did not hear me, be able to retire ever. There are tons of people right now who have three to four jobs, and there are tons of people over the age of 65 within the United States and many other countries around the world who are still working and are going to be working because they have no savings. So whenever I hear something about a, a retirement plan, I think maybe that's what makes me kind of happy because I want to make sure that everyone either retires early or retires with a huge amount of savings. So the idea that institutions are already into the cryptocurrency space, and then you get to the actual discussion as well of uh, retirement accounts who also have to then buy up that Bitcoin because this is an allocators of the people who are in these retirement funds, is incredible because it also decreases the amount of actively circulating Bitcoin that's actually out there as well. Here's the actual website, and I was just scrolling through it a little bit to kind of see exactly what they offered, if you will. And as of right now, you can see a couple of coins over here. I can see Bitcoin, I see Ether, and I see XRP. Not exactly sure what else kind of retirement accounts they have. I assume they have many of the other coins. I would assume a, a Litecoin, probably not in uh, EOS or Tezos, at least at the moment. Anyway, yeah, um, this isn't a paid partnership. It's more of a get your life together ship uh, because... I love the idea of telling people to not only, like you have to invest in something. Like you, you, you just can't have your money just sitting in a bank account because you're losing money every single year. And I, my, I mean, listen, uh, it's also just another way for people to kind of get into the cryptocurrency market. I guess in essence, you could do the kind of the exact same thing when it comes to uh, what you call it, like Coinbase and stuff like that. Just invest in something. If you are one of the people who just really want someone else to do it for them, you now have Bitcoin uh, retirement accounts, which I, once again, find spectacular. Let's move on. Next up, founded by the Winklevies, the US-based crypto exchange Gemini, it's considering Asian expansion and has already appointed its new managing director for the Asia-Pacific region. According to an announcement by Coindesk, 
Winklevoss Twins founded entrepreneurial venture is expanding its roots into Asia following its successful launch in Australia of last year. I had no idea they were even in Australia. It has hired a new head of the region, Jeremy... I have no idea how to pronounce that. NG, who was also the former Goldman Sachs executives and a, has a rich experience of 20 years in Singapore and Hong Kong. Gemini president Cameron Winklevoss would be the direct line manager under whom NG would oversee the entire expansion process along with rapid hirings and business opportunities. In an official statement, the Winklevoss twins said that the decision to appoint a new managing director for this region is in line with our biggest plan to expand our presence in Asia. And NG would also play the role, and I'm reading it wrong, but I really can't fathom how to pronounce something with no vowels. I, I, I can't get it. Would play the lead role and be the face of the company. And this extensive mission said the tech gurus. Sure. I, I feel like it was about time. Uh, just about every other major cryptocurrency, anything, has already expanded to at least four continents at this point so I, I guess it was only logical i mean i'm shocked that they did, didn't do this before i feel like there are at least seven places within asia that they should have had offices but sure good for them this was also quite popular news i'm not sure if it's because people like the wink of eyes or because uh people in singapore are known to have um heavier pockets and therefore them entering into that space could potentially cause more money why am i touching the the, the, the keys i'm I, I i keep touching my keyboard as if something's going to happen like you can't you can't see my fingers but i look ridiculous i'm like tapping along the keys nothing's gonna uh pockets rich people therefore more people might get into the cryptocurrency space that's the gemini news and yeah let's move on in super mega everywhere at the same exact time news Someone seems to have mistakenly paid $2.5 million for an Ethereum transaction where the actual Ether they were sending was only $133. So someone sent $133 worth of Ether and paid a transaction fee of $2.5 million. It's as though the real reason it could be more nefarious. That's just, uh, no. Earlier today, just before 10 a.m., a transaction sent on the Ethereum network that cost the sender over $2.5 million. Instead of opting for a fee that could have been 50 cents, the sender paid 10,668 Ether, worth around $2.59 million to send 0.55 Ether, worth $133 at the time. The fee went to Spark Pool. A Chinese mining pool that processed the transaction. The pool paused the pay. Wow. The pool paused payouts to its miners and is waiting for the sender to contact them. Because I'm pretty sure. Can you can you imagine? Like imagine, imagine someone. Imagine you have like a, a lemonade stand and somebody pays you a dollar for the lemonade, but then gives you like their house as like the tax on top of the thing that they're buying kind of doesn't really make any sense the transaction was included in block whatever by spark pool and ethereum mining pool spark pool has since blocked the payout to its miners telling its followers on twitter that they are currently investigating the unusually high fee and are trying to identify the owner there's the transaction right there spark pool called the community to provide tips on the mysterious transaction though this wasn't the first time that spark pool has had to deal with a transaction with such an unusually high fee Fee. Historically, Sparkpool has managed to find and split the fee with the original sender each time. Uh, last year, Sparkpool froze the payout of 2,100 Ether they received from mining a block <laughs> worth over 300,000 at the time. Uh, this was, as one might imagine, uh, very popular news because people are trying to figure out exactly what happened. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I, I think someone sent the transaction had the $2.6 million transaction fee, and I think they also resent another transaction as well. So I think apparently two of them happened on the exact same day. Uh, so the internet said. Uh, kind of weird. Sure, why not? I saw a couple of places um, saying that um, this was terrible. Ethereum has such high fees. Listen, if you've, I mean, stop it. 
E Ethereum's fees, e Ethereum's network fees aren't normally over a million dollars. Uh, no one would be using it. Uh, even sometimes we've seen before in the past where Ethereum has had the transaction fees of like 80 cents. It's still not $2.59 million. Um, mystery, mystery. Who knows why this happened? If it's going to happen again. I mean, I would, I would be devastated if I knew that I had... Maybe it happened on purpose. Maybe they... I don't know. People are weird. I don't think I'd ever send a $2.5 million transaction fee. Um, at least not me, myself. Yeah, that's that news. I mean, not, not really much to say about it. This was just extremely popular. A lot of people are interested over the fact that someone paid that much for a transaction fee. It's not my money. I mean... At the end of the day, sure. I mean, if you if if you feel secure enough in your richness that you want to pay two point six million for a transaction fee, by all means, please go for it. Let's move on. Next up, also in quite popular news, how can digital tools be used to improve the delivery of federal stimulus payments during nineteen? That was the subject of U.S. House committees or the Committee on Financial Services hearing today. But as it turns out, the solutions may have less to do with the newfangled blockchain technology and digital dollars, and much more to do with the old-fashioned post office, because in the year 2020, there's nothing like getting paid from the post office. The hearing focused in particular on payments on the unbanked, or those who don't have bank accounts, or regular relationship with a similar entity like a credit union, and that's because... For those of you who don't know, banks hate poor people. Banks do not open up in poor neighborhoods or poor areas. It is believed. I, f I, f I don't know the... Wait. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's more than 10 to 20 million people in the United States do not have bank accounts because they also... And I'm not getting into any other... The point is, uh, there are many places, not only around the world, but also within the United States, uh, where people simply don't have bank accounts. And it was believed for a long time it was because people didn't so and so or maybe people had their cash under their mattress while this may still be true for some people out there uh it's usually because um banks don't open up in poor neighborhoods and what ends up happening is they open up um check cashing places for those of you who have never heard of what that is it's basically a place where you get paid from your employer still in the physical pe piece of paper because it's 2020 in the form of a check which many other countries have stopped using since the 90s I mean, many places, and you then take that check to a check cashing place, and they charge you around a good $10, $15 to be able to cash your check, as opposed to a, a free or a, a lesser charge service that the bank would normally offer you. So the, the, the part of the discussion is, is that when all those stimulus checks were going out, um, one of the main things that we heard is that a lot of people would not receive them until around, what was it, July, August? Uh, because they didn't have bank accounts and they had to be mailed out. And that's why Jack Dorsey was like, you know, you can just do this with an app, right? But no one listened. Following the introduction of the CARES Act to the U.S. Congress in March, additional bills were introduced that pr include provisions for direct monthly payments to most U.S. adults via deposits to a, new, to a new type of basic bank account backed by the Federal Reserve known as a Fed account. They said Congress had hearings in the 1980s on the 1980s on the problems of the unbanked. And here we are more than three decades later discussing the same issues. Wonderful. They said we should applaud and celebrate private sector innovation and technology, but it shouldn't be an excuse for public policy stasis. Fed accounts are a form of digital money on the books of the Fed. It's a compelling way to deal with the problem of the unbanked. How... Uh, what, 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 I, I feel like we're in the 1930s and someone's just not telling me. What is the, is the word apprehension? Why don't governments innovate quicker? Like what they're so stuck on. It's the same exact thing. I, w I was reading an article about a day or two ago and they were talking about the, 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 the strength of Swift and how Swift was going to be around for at least another decade or two. And I'm like, it's from the 70s. Like, it's, it takes seven, eight, nine, ten days to send money overseas. That doesn't make any sense. The world is, has moved so far farther than that. Um, it's a compelling way to deal with the problem of the unbanked, which has been on the public policy agenda for decade after decade. Wow. 
At some point, direct policy provisioning needs to be part of the conversation, which it probably never will be. Proposed legislation that includes Fed accounts plans to use, here we go, federal post offices as banking locations. An ideal, an idea found in University of California, Irvine School of Law, Professor Mersha Baradaran's 2014 Harvard Law Review essayed on the topic. Professor Baradaran was also in the attendance at the, at a witness at the congressional hearing. They said postal banks are natural ally to the Federal Reserve central banking system. And the reason is that they have the footprint in every community, regardless. You know what also has a footprint in just about every single community? A computer, a smartphone, a tablet. I have, I have older people in my family who know how to use computers, who know how to um, video chat on um, smartphones. And I don't understand the... This is not a technology problem. The payment system is already there. Yeah, sure. Good job. Our Federal Reserve is probably the best payment system in the world. They said, this is not a technology problem. The payment system is already there. Our Federal Reserve is probably the best payment system in the world, and we can make it even better. Um... I guess the main takeaway is no matter, wait, I, no, ooh, my brain's all scrambled. So we've seen this happen before in the past. Um, if, if you are bored today at any point and you're looking for something new and fun and awesome and cool to do, look up on the internet because everyone has the internet. Um, look, look up what people used to say um, about the internet in around the early 90s. Um, look up what people used to say about the, uh, the, the, the radio. This was also a very big thing. Look at what people used to say about the TV. And you can also find articles as to what people used to say about the car. When the car was first invented, the argument was, we have a box with two wheels and we have horses. Why would anyone want to use a metal box that drives you around. It's, it's slow and it's clunky. I, I'm, I'm more than sure my horse will just be fine. Same exact thing with the internet. You can find people laughing at it and saying, wait, digital mail? That doesn't make any sense. Why would I want to look at a screen to read my mail? Uh, and here we are many years later um, on that same exact topic as far as um, uh, all the newspapers who, <laughs> I remember when I was younger, uh, a lot of news publications became digital and other ones continued to print themselves, and they were like, we're going to be around forever. And now they're not. Anyway, um, that is just completely delusional. I've never, that's... Oof, um, well, I don't know how to finish this thought. It's more of a, when life gives you lemonades, lemonades, <laughs> life gives you lemons, and you, and you continue to eat dirt i mean it's 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 kind of they have no intention of revamping the banking system they have no intention of really helping anyone who's impoverished and or poor uh, to help them get into the financial system it's it's a little weird um once again even i mean even jack dorsey was like you can just use my app to send these payments imagine imagine a world you know Stay with me because I, I listen when the entire 19 thing happened and many people were losing their jobs around the world. I had many friends living in different countries whose governments were like, we're going to give you some type of money to to tide you over. And I remember friends were I kid you the actual not applied on a Monday and had the money sent to their account by Wednesday or Thursday. Boom, it took about a good two to three days. Even, even any backlog, I think the longest it took was for one friend, it took him about a good week or two weeks. The, the normal stimulus check for the U.S. took about a good two months to even begin to start rolling out, and it still has not gotten to everyone. Imagine a world, even, it would have even made more sense if the Fed had simply created a website or an app and sent out the money that way. Like, everyone downloads the Fed app. This is how you get your money really quick. But of course... Logic, um, 
This, I mean, man, when, 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 you, when, you, when, you, when you talk about why Bitcoin is so successful and why Bitcoin's going to be around for a very long time and why, and why cryptocurrencies themselves are just incredible, like incredible inventions, it's, it's because of stuff like this. What, why has it taken so long? Can you imagine having lost your job, been out of work for three, four, five months, you can't pay your rent, you can't pay your mortgage, and the $1,200 check still has not gotten to you, and they're proposing you go to your post office and open up a new account with your post office to be able to receive this money. And I'm sure the, the actual infrastructure isn't even there for them to even begin to start doing this. Wow, 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 wow. All right, that's that news. It's just, I mean, let's move on. And to finish things off, and probably one of my most favorite stories in a very long time. On one hand, the Bitcoin industry has matured to include traditional brokerages and institutional traders. On the other hand, Bitcoin privacy tech is still shrouded in a legal gray zone. The Human Rights Foundation took a strong stance on Bitcoin privacy tech on Wednesday by announcing its new Bitcoin Developer Fund. The first $50,000 grant from the fund has been awarded to freelance CoinSwap developer Chris Belcher. Okay. CoinSwap, a mixing technique originated, originated, originally invented in 2013 by Greg Maxwell, is part of a comprehensive suite of privacy tools being developed by Bitcoin advocates. They said the fund's next gift already earmarked for another developer working on strengthening Bitcoin's pseudonymity at the network level, will be announced later this summer. This was said by Alex Gladstein, or Gladstein, the HRF chief's strategy officer. He said this in an email. For those of you who do not know what a coin mixer, a coin join, or a coin swap thing is, uh, because companies such as Chainalysis are able to uh, track Bitcoin transactions uh, if they deem them illegal or nefarious a lot of people are using coin swaps and coin joins we're pretty much i think i mentioned this about a day or two ago if you are sending a bitcoin i'm sending a bitcoin you're sending a bitcoin she's sending a bitcoin uh, it all gets mixed into one big thing and it kind of shoots out in different directions than where it previously was before so the end recipient still gets it but it's not the same bitcoin as before and therefore it helps to increase the the anonymity and privacy of the actual uh, network. That's how they work. HRF will also crowd was will also crowdsource fundraising for such privacy tech. He added using both dollars and Bitcoin while making it possible for activists to more safely receive receive donations, earn income, and continue their important work under increased financial pressure. This is if this doesn't excite you, I'm not sure what planet you're living on. The, the, humans, the Human Rights Foundation has donated money to increase the actual an, the anonymity of Bitcoin to a completely different level. Like I mentioned before, many other videos, we have, there are at least six to seven different proposals right now that are currently being worked on. Like, it's not that one will be activated and then the other six won't. They're all trying to make other layers and other chains around Bitcoin and on top of Bitcoin to have private transactions for Bitcoin. So eventually in five to 10 years in the future, you will send the transaction. It will go through so many different levels and layers. No one will be able to tell where this transaction came from. We will eventually live in a world where we will have a financial system where no transactions can be tracked by anyone. No one will know where they came from, who they're going to. This is, it makes me happy because this is, how many people believe the world should be you should not only have access to your own money whenever you want there was also news very recently there was some company i think they they had 200 million in an account or in, in accounts and they were all frozen because someone said that they did something nefarious and now all their money is completely frozen until they are uh proven innocent as it were uh that's insane it, it, it's just all these little things it, 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 even for smaller people the same exact thing before when people were trying to buy crypto and their accounts were being frozen by their banks it doesn't make a lot of sense so the the stronger bitcoin's network becomes the more people that join the network uh a lot of people will be able to enjoy the freedom 
of sending money to their family members around the world who need it, uh, paying money to their friends, you got to know the entire um, thing I'm talking about. Anyway, like I said, I thought this was absolutely incredible. Uh, many people may not care for this, but I think it's absolutely freaking fantastic. Because um, I'm sure even behind the scenes, there are many other companies who are also, uh, what's the word, funding things like this as well. Like, I don't think people understand the significance of being able, like, we live in a world where we're used to not being able to do with our money as we so please. Like, even so far as, like, going to the supermarket, like, you are used to the idea that it comes up on your, your, your bank statement, like, supermarket, or bought this in a store, or if you buy something on Amazon or somewhere else, it says exactly what you purchased when you purchased it. Like, it's, it's, none of that is really needed. Like, we didn't have this kind of system 20, 30, 40 years ago. Like, you were able to buy and whatever you wanted. But anyway, uh, I thought this was amazing. This may not um, excite other people as, as much as it probably should, but here we are. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbite University, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia569, Yasha Harari, Moonman, High XRP, The Pothead, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyer, Chongololo, Songololo, Nostromo, John Sarson, Yana Marita, Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grace, Sigmore, Hamaroni, Massive Engines in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 2 for Truth of the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Adobo, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Nicholas Renault, One Piece, One Love, Damien Setsun, Nick Kanai, Richie Richard, Third, Vlad, the Impale, the Paxis, Nick Mon, Jell, Avoni, Anthony, Charles, Jim Garner, Jamie Fox, Mentee, Coins, Millie, Hitchess, Harry Dan, Kyle, Sleeve, Leg Day, Yes, the Crypto, Buddy McButtface, Indies, Havanese, Smart Corner, Staff, Arf, Medic, 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Romagini, Sound, Crypto, with Lionel, Crayla, Michelle, URL, Bolero, Bastos, and Hold On, I Have to Sneeze. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who... Thank you to all of you. I, 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 I forgot the normal thing I say, but thank you, everybody. I, I'm giving you a big digital hug. And I know at least one person hugged me back, so thank you. Um, yeah, the market's still down because of the entire uh, news that we got that the Fed thought that uh, the markets uh, and the world economy would not uh, fully recover for the next three years. And then the stock market went down and then the crypto market went down following right behind it, which also logically makes no sense because the crypto market is meant to combat and beat and um, usurp the traditional financial markets. So that's just how things currently are prices are in the red um if you were at all looking at some point to accumulate more coins or were looking for prices to uh drop a little bit further this may now be your chance i do hope you all enjoyed i do hope you all are having a great day a great morning a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.